This channel is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. Hi, welcome back to Invest Like a Pro. This is Joe Rabel. In today's video, I'm going to go through three examples I think are incredibly important for someone who's watching a particular stock, especially if you're looking to get in something that, that you want to be in for a little while, uh, maybe off a weekly chart, a breakout pattern, and it ends up triggering on a gap. All right. And this has happened here this past week, especially with the movement that we saw late last week. Um, some stocks that I had been highlighting to people, uh, my subscribers, that triggered via a gap. And it makes it very difficult to decide how you want to handle this. So I want to give you a methodology to be able to take advantage of these, at least with really tiny risks, to see if they want to follow through or not. So let's go ahead and get into these examples. I think it'll be very helpful. Okay, so first of all, I want to lay the groundwork here looking at the bigger picture pattern. Um, I'm going to do this more thoroughly on the PLTR. And then uh, on the other examples, I, I, I want you to just understand what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, but I want to spend a little bit more time on uh, the entry and you understanding how to reduce risk in this situation. Because uh, if you look at something like PLTR, we had a... Uh, uh, this is a stock that we've definitely been talking about. It has a pretty interesting pattern when you look at what's taken place on the monthly. You had a move to the upside and it formed a pinch play as this was working up off the low. And notice how the ADX line is rising with green DI kicking in here. So this is a pretty quality looking pattern to me on the monthly chart. Now, we do have some resistance up in here. Uh, but just if you look at the way this is turning around and the 18 month turning around, it definitely has, a, I think, what would be an interesting uh, situation if we can get a setup on the weekly. Now, the way this is set up has been very awkward on the weekly. And I'm going to zero in on this because it, it made a move here and pulled back and then it kind of laid on here with this dropping. Now, you could have tried to play this. But um, as I was talking about with my subscribers that I really kind of felt like based on what the MACD was doing that we'd get a second pullback and test. And then it moved up here. Now, again, it's really kind of an awkward trade if you're doing it off the weekly alone. If you went down to the daily chart, to me, that makes a little more sense. We had a really nice setup uh, with a pinch play uh, with the 18 cupping around and we had a nice move. Now, if you played it off the weekly and the daily, you would have probably taken a target and then been stopped out at a break even on the second piece. At least that's the way I would have managed that position. But if you did this off the weekly, you could have been in and your stop would have been way down here using the average true range. The average true range times two is is around, uh, it would be, let me just check on that. It's It would be $4 of risk, uh, $4 of risk total. Uh, meaning the average true range is around $2. So if you got in around 16, your stop would be way down at like 12 or something like that. So you could have lived through all this, but let's just say you didn't want to do that. And you're looking at this pattern. Why would this be a trigger here? And my reasoning would be that um, it actually set up a little bit better by letting it consolidate a little bit and pull back. And what happened was we formed a reverse divergence here. MACD went to a lower low. This made a higher low. So we can draw our trend line in. And that trend line took place on this gap up right here. All right. And we can see it on the hourly. It's pretty extended. Now, I want to make sure I, I cover this uh, specific matter. And this goes for all these stocks that I'm going to talk about. You could always wait and see if you get your higher low here. I'm not telling you that this is the only way to enter this trade. It is possible that this will take off. I mean, it is possible it'll keep going. I think that's probably a lower likelihood. But if you do what I'm saying, you could end up getting a really good entry because let's say if this pushes up towards the high at 20 and then pulls back and then you're waiting for this. So you're kind of getting in up here around 19, 19 and change versus where I'm going to show you how you could get in on this initial bar on this pullback here. 
All right, so I want to make sure I'm laying the groundwork for all the other trades. This is what we're trying to do. We're looking at this and we're saying, I got a weekly breakout via a big gap. In this case, it was a big gap, all right? And so if it's not a big gap, then you could go ahead and play it, right? I mean, you could play the, the break of the downtrend line, use the weekly, and you have a, you're have you giving it a lot of room anyway. But when it's a big gap, it makes people a little uneasy. Do I really want to dive into this? And a lot of times they end up just failing. So um, you have that opportunity. Also have the opportunity of waiting for this to form a higher low as another opportunity to get in this. But let's just go down and see what's going on here. We got the three hour pullback. We got an, a, a move to the upside and then we got a two hour pullback. If we go down to the smaller time frame, I want to show you what happened. So on the 10 minute chart, and I'm not going to explain every detail from my course. I mean, if you have my course, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. We had a setup developing on the 10-minute chart. And I'm going to go back on the two-minute so you can see how this played out. Um, so we got the pullback. And we know that we're, we're looking at a stock that has this massive gap up. So you want to think about it like this, that this is all green, right? This is a huge gap up here. Huge move to the upside. So we've got this monster move to the upside, and now we're getting a pullback. If you do the retracement of that, it's probably about a third, uh, maybe at the most. So we finally get our pullback here. We're still showing a lot of strength on this side. The volume pattern looks good. And then look at what the way this plays out. We get a move to the downside. We get overrun here. We actually get a little bit of selling. Now, I want to clarify something here. Look at way this took place to the downside. You see this violent bar, all right? And and, sent, and then we immediately reversed off of that. And then we pushed down, and this is all negative DI as well, went to a minor new low, and then immediately reversed off that. So the ADX is showing a lot of weakness based on that, but I can see what's going on. They're taking advantage of these declines, and there's not a lot of downside follow-through. So that mutes this a little bit for me. All right. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to completely ignore it and buy the moment this breaks a downtrend line or crosses the 18 or anything like that. But I would be willing to play a 40 to 18 bounce, which is also uh, the two in this situation. It's also a pinch play in this situation. If you look at the way that really nice pinch formed. All right. And we got a really tiny little narrow range bar. All right. Now, I might not do it off the narrow range bar. You could do it off the narrow range bar here at 1740 and put your stop. Give it a little bit of room underneath this low. Don't just use the low, like a cent below the low. One of the things you could do is figure out what the, the uh, daily ATR is and take one tenth of the daily ATR and add that to the bottom here. So you might be giving it like an extra 10 cents or something like that, just in case it comes down and does one of these deals. And that happens a lot on these interday patterns. But let's just say you waited for the close. You're in around, let's just say 1745 and your stops down here. So you're let's say you're risking, um, let's just keep it really simple. Um, we'll say you're risking uh, 35 cents, all right? 35 cents. Now, we're doing this trade off of a two minute chart, all right? But what I want you to do to determine the size of the position is the weekly risk. So there's $4 of weekly risk figure out how much you're going to take. You, you're treating this like it's a weekly trade. All right. I want you to treat it like it's a weekly trade, but we're going to take interday risk. And uh, the way I'm going to do that is, and this is really 10 minute risk because I'm, I'm waiting for this to trigger on the two minute and then I'm making sure I give it enough room in case it wants to come back down on the 10 minute. All right. So I, I'm set, let's just make a round number. Instead of risking $4, I risk 40 cents. OK, so I'm risking 40 cents instead of four dollars. All right. Now, if you think about that, if if I can get four dollars to the upside on this trade, risking four cents, that's 10. That's 10 R. That's 10 times my risk. You guys understand, hopefully, where I'm coming from on this. So what you could do is actually is actually take half of your position off if you get to one R because you're making 10 times what you really risked. OK, and then see what the rest wants to do. That's assuming it wants to keep going higher. Now, this has continued to push higher. Who knows if that's going to happen or not, or if, the, if this is eventually going to come back down and stop you out. But if you can get that one R triggered and it hasn't done it yet, I mean, it, it's going to need to push higher. It needs to make a pretty big move. We're talking about weekly risk. 
uh, weekly targets and 10 minute risk. All right. Weekly targets, 10 minute risk. This gives you the opportunity to do it. Now, the beauty of this is since you're using the four dollars to determine your position size, if you lose on this trade, it's a dinky loss. It's not a big loss. You're taking, you know, one tenth of a of a of an R instead of a full R of what you normally would have. So if you have an account that's a fifty thousand dollar account, you risk five hundred dollars a trade at one percent then you're really only risking 50, 50 bucks. Maybe with slippage, it ends up being $75 or something like that instead of 500, all right? So if you understand that, I think this can be a really big advantage. Now, let me give you a couple other examples. Um, so Yelp was another one. Now, this hasn't followed through yet. Um, we've got a break of the downtrend that happened. Um, we, we've been watching this develop with really strong um, ADX on the weekly with a huge base here. And then again, it, it forms off of a gap off the earnings. Now we get the pullback. Let's just look at the way this played out on the uh, short term time frame. So we get um, the same pullback. You see how these are forming the same way on the 10 minute? You get this pullback. You do get overrun, but what I would I would tell you is is that we don't want to be um, we want to be a little bit less focused on that. Um, almost always going to be taking the second entry and not the down the the trend line break. So you make a push to the upside and you get a pullback. Obviously, this is our setup here. You could do it anywhere in here. There was really no strength on this sell side based on the ADX. Uh, now this is kind of a thinner trader, not as good of a, of a situation, but you still can take this trade, give it uh, to the low plus one tenth of the daily ATR. So you give it a little bit more room just in case it wants to come down and maybe make a second test. And it might still be breaking though. This hasn't followed through much, but again, if I'm doing this and I'm looking at this trade and I'm saying, normally I would risk um, $5 and 50 cents. All right. In this situation, I'm risking uh, 44 down to 44. So it, again, it's probably right around one tenth of that, maybe a little bit more when you add the ATTR in place. So it's a way to get in there, take really dinky risk, give yourself a shot in case it wants to just, you know, some of these are buy, I consider a buyable gap up when you're triggering a good trade. Like it, to me, it's a viable gap up because this is a tr this is a trigger to a, um, a trade setup. So uh, if you have that, you can take advantage of it. But make sure the size of your positions is based on the weekly, and then take the the risk off the ten minute. Let's do one more example. Here's a six dollar risk in DraftKings. Now DraftKings was a really good example of a um, zero line reversal. Uh, that didn't quite make it to the zero line, but look at the power of the ADX on the weekly chart. Uh, really high quality. Now, there's nothing wrong with sitting back here and waiting for this to set up. That's probably going to be a really good trade. But if you can look to get in on this bar here, um, and the way I would go about doing that is the same way. Now, this is different. This one, I wanted to give a different example. You see the strength of this move and then the pullback? Now, this is actually kind of a pinch play developing with powerful ADX. It's actually still rising. And um, if we go back and look at the hourly chart, it's just in a powerful, powerful trend here. Uh, but because we have a rising ADX, we don't have to come all the way down to the 18. You see what I mean? This is a rising ADX. So we go down to our two minute. And in this case, it's really, really a strong setup. It consolidates and the two lines just meet together. All right. And this is a zero line reversal where we've come up and tested. It hasn't quite made it all the way down, but look at the strength of the ADX where the red can't even cross above the green. Here's our entry on the higher pivot low. We don't have to be a hero and buy it here off of some kind of a trend line break or anything like that. Let it do the higher pivot low. We're still getting in at a really good level. Give it the low plus the ATR and see what this wants to do. This has made really nice follow through. We'll see how this plays out. I mean, I don't know if any of these are really going to work, but, but the way I want to put this to you is that we're looking at getting in. And in this case, um, you know, 3130, 30. So again, it's it's very close. 60 cents uh, to get to for a six dollar. Normally you'd risk six dollars. You're risking 60 cents and you give it a little extra room maybe from that, but figure out your position size off the weekly. See if you can't take this. Now, the way this could play out is you could get in and you could get stopped out, all right? You take a loss. So you've taken a dinky loss 
And then you sit back and wait. Now you know you haven't missed it. Go back to your daily chart, use your hourly, get your setup, get your setup off the daily and the hourly, and now you know you haven't missed it. Now I know this is a more aggressive way of playing, of playing these, all right, using the, the uh, short-term time frame. But the reality is that sometimes if you really want to get in these and you have the time to look at these, you're going to need the first half hour of the day, maybe the first hour of the day to, to watch this set up. And if you have the ability to do that and know some of the people that I work with do, um, then you want to be able to take advantage of it. So hopefully this helps. Um, but either way, it does give you an idea. Now, I'm showing you a specific setup off of a, a gap up. But this exact same strategy can be used on any specific trade setup, all right? You can do it on any trade setup. It doesn't have to be a gap up, all right? So um, think about this. If you want to do this and take a couple shots at something, this is a really low-risk way to play the game to, put, to skew the risk-reward in your favor dramatically, all right? Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.